All right, we're recording. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for thanks for joining us this morning. Um, my name is Chris Betcher. I'm on the Google for Education team. I'm running late, and I'm so sorry. Uh, my bad. Um, we're going to talk, talk about 15 Chrome tips in 15 minutes. If you miss any of this or you want to revisit it, there's a link there, bit.ly slash 15 Chrome tips. And if you go there, there's a slide deck, and I've actually made a set of 15 slides, and each slide has a short YouTube video in it that actually unpacks each of these. So if... Um, if, uh, if you want to revisit or if you can't stay the whole time, uh, you can get what you need from that link. Um, so let's kick off. So this is what we're going to be talking about. These are the 15 tips. Um, I won't read them out to you, but that's what we'll be talking about today. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of things in there that hopefully will give you some, some useful tips for using Google Chrome. Speaking of Google Chrome, um, Chrome is a browser, uh, as you probably know. Uh, it competes with things like um, Edge and Firefox and Safari and things like that. So it's 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 a browser, um, but we think it's a really good browser and it's actually pretty popular. The um, uh, I was always intrigued why it's called Chrome, because in the early days of the internet, um, when web browsers first appeared, uh, all of those things around the outside of the browser, all the buttons and edges and stuff, that was referred to as Chrome. And ironically, when Chrome came out, it actually didn't have a lot of that stuff. So it was kind of an ironic name, but it had all the stuff that most browsers didn't have. So it didn't have all the stuff that most browsers did have. Um, that's why it's called Chrome. And uh, it also refers to this idea that, you know, if you think of things that are Chrome, like fast cars with Chrome things on them. So it was this nod to the idea of Chrome was a very fast browser. Um, hot tip for you before we get started on the tips is, Always sign into Chrome. So up in the top corner, you have the ability to click on that little um, button of your your face or your icon, and you can actually sign in. And if you sign into Chrome, it actually synchronizes across to other instances. So if you're working on more than one computer, for example, or you've got you, your phone and your computer, it'll synchronize everything across. So all of your bookmarks and history and passwords and everything will all work no matter which computer you're using. So I do recommend you sign in. All right, let's have a look at some of those tips. So let's, uh, as you can see, this is the slide deck that I'm going to give you at the end. Um, it's got a short description and a short video. I'm not going to play the video for you. In fact, I'm just going to come out of this slide deck and we'll look at these together. So managing, moving, and splitting tabs. So first of all, um, you can see on my screen here, I've got a number of tabs across the top and you can move them. So if you click on a tab, you can drag it to the left or right and change its order drag that one over there and move that one there. So you can change the order of the tabs. Now, you can also, and this is easiest to show you if I just reduce the size of this window slightly. So I'm now in a floating window. Um, if you click and drag on a tab, you can actually drag it away from its parent window. So now I've got two windows. And if you drag it back and put it near it again, it'll reattach itself. Um, in this browser-based world we live in, um, so much of what you do is in tabs. It really is useful to know how to manage those tabs. So that's how you move and split the tabs. You can also, by the way, if you drag a tab away and you right-click on it, you have the option to move tab to another window. And so you can also push it back to the tab that way. So if I want to put it back into that other tab, I just click that and it flies back up into the other collection. So moving tabs around and splitting them and, and whatever, really useful skill. Uh, let's get full screen again. Um, the second, second tip is pinning tabs. So you can see along the top here that my tabs, one, two, three, four, five, six tabs I've got open. Um, well, some of them, like for example, my Google Drive tab, I might want that open all the time and I don't want to close it. So one of the things you can do is to pin it. You can do that by right clicking on the tab and going down to where it says pin. And when you do that, it turns it into a small tab up in the top, you see it's in the top corner there. Whenever you pin a tab, uh, let's pin another one. Let's pin this one. So I don't want to close that. We'll say pin. That will fly across to the left-hand side there. And you can see I've got two tabs that are pinned, and the others are just normal tabs. The beauty of pinning a tab is it makes it smaller, so you can fit more of them on the screen if you need to. But also, it takes away the little X. So it's much harder to accidentally close a tab. So things that are important that you want running all day, like your drive or classroom or Gmail or whatever, you can just leave them running in a, in a pinned tab all day. That's pinning. Um, third tip is to bring back an accidentally closed tab. So I mentioned that when a tab is pinned, it's, it loses its X, so you can't close it accidentally. Uh, one of the things you occasionally might do by mistake is you might have a tab and you accidentally hit the X. And you go, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Well, a little shortcut for you is Control-Shift-T, and it actually brings that tab back from wherever it went. 
so you can you can sort of return tabs if you accidentally close them. And if I close multiple tabs, so I'll close this one and I'll close that one and I'll close that one. I close three tabs. So if I go Control Shift T once, Control Shift T twice, Control Shift T three times, it actually brings back the tabs. So you've got an unlimited number of undos on these tabs if you accidentally close one with Control Shift T, or if you're on Mac, it's Command Shift T. Uh, next tip would be the tab groups. This is a really interesting one. So for example, I've got three, let's say three things here. I've got this Teacher Center tab, the ABC Kids tab, and the Chrome Music tab. And let's say for some reason they all are related somehow. They might be things I'm working on right now. So what you can do is you can hold down the Shift key and you can Shift click. So I've, I've simply held down the Shift key while I click on the three tabs. Now you can, you can kind of see there, they're highlighted. They're a lighter color than this other one. So those three are selected. When they're selected, you can right click on it and say, add tabs to a group, a new group. When you do that, you can give that group a name. So I'm just going to call this projects, right? And I can choose a color, let's do yellow, and then press enter. And what happens is you can see at the top there, I've got this tab now that says projects and this yellow line that actually goes across all of those three tabs. And when I click the word projects, it actually shrinks them all down. So I've grouped tabs together Right. And now when I want to open them up again, I click on projects and it expands them out again. If you work in a lot of tabs, like many of us do, uh, you can sort of expand and contract these groups of tabs. It just makes life a little easier. All right. Uh, who is that? Bruce, I think your microphone is uh, unmuted, my friend. If you, if you want to mute, because you're coming through. Apologies. That's okay, mate. No problem at all. Uh, all right, so that is um, group tabs. And when you're done with it, if you don't want it anymore, you can just go in there and say ungroup, and it will just pull them back out into separate tabs again. So it's very useful. I use that all the time. Uh, tab groups. Okay, let's look at the next one. The next one is enlarging or shrinking the page content. So you can see a good example would be if I go to, say, this ABC Kids website. Um, if I want the content on the page to be bigger or smaller, so maybe I don't, my eyes aren't great, I have to wear glasses. So you can go Control Plus. And it makes things a bit bigger. Control plus makes things a bit bigger. And I can keep going control plus. It keeps making things bigger. And of course, control minus makes things smaller. If you wanted to do that, you can. And control zero brings things back to normal. So if you're ever looking at a web page and the text is too small, just go control plus and it will just make things a little bit bigger, make it easier to read. So that's just built right into Chrome. Um, uh, next tip would be managing bookmarks. So when you find a website you like, so let's go somewhere here. I'm going to go to this ABC Kids thing. Let's go to the recipe book. All right, and it opens up this recipe book. Let's say I want to keep this page. To bookmark a page in Chrome, it's this little star on the corner here. And you can see the star is blank at the moment, but if I click it, it gets colored in, and it offers to save this for me. And I can save it in different folders. So let's say, let's say I don't want any of those folders. I can go, uh, let's do choose another folder. And I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to put it in Cool Tools. I'm going to say New Folder. I'm going to call this uh, Kids. All right, and then press Enter. And when I save that, that now goes into a folder called Kids. And we'll see where that, look, that appears in just a second. Um, once, you organ once you save uh, bookmarks, where you can actually manage them is if you go to the three, tab the three dots up in the top right-hand corner, and down to bookmarks, there's a thing here called the bookmark manager. And when you look at the bookmark manager, it actually has all these things here. So if I open up cool tools, there's the music one that I made. Um, if I go there, there's the kids one that I made. So you can actually browse all your bookmarks in one place um, by using the bookmark manager. So that's handy. Uh, all right, let's go and have a look. What's the next tip is appearance, language, and other settings. Um, you can make Chrome work however you want it to work. And the easiest way to do that is to go to the three dots up in the top corner and down to settings. There's a couple of things here you should probably look at. One of them is appearance. And you can change things about the way the browser looks. So, for example, if you want to have specific colors in your browser, I've just got mine set to the plain white at the moment. But you can change the colors. Um, the, the, there's a home button. You can see this little picture of the house up in the top corner here. Um, that's not on by default. If you, some people like it, some people don't, so you can turn it on and off, so there's that. If you do have the home button, you can just decide whether it opens a new tab, whether it goes to a specific address. So there's a whole bunch of settings in here for how it looks, but I'd recommend you take a moment and browse through here. It's all pretty self-explanatory. Um, it's just a matter of knowing it's there. And the other thing is languages. 
Um, I have got, I'm using a Chromebook today. So um, if you're on a Mac or Windows, it's a little bit different, but it basically works the same. You can set your languages in here. So you can choose which base language you want to use. So language is a useful thing to do. Now, the next tip I know is about this one here. So I just want to show you this one. This is uh, a section in the settings called downloads. This is probably, I guess it, this might be my number one tip actually, because by default, this is off. Um, and if you don't know to come in here and change it, uh, what this does is when you turn this on, it says ask where to save each file before downloading. If you've ever done this thing where you're on the internet and you click on something and it goes to download something to your computer, uh, and then it just vanishes, it just disappears. Like <laughs> You know it downloaded, but you don't know where it went. By turning this on, it will actually pop up a box and ask you where you want to save that. This, I think, is the number one thing that saves people's sanity. So I would really recommend you turn that on. And um, when you do turn it on, the other thing you can set in here is when you do download something, where does it go? So, you know, it might go to your desktop, it might go to your My Documents, it might go to a special folder you have. Whatever it is, you can come in here and you can set the downloads folder to go wherever you want it to go. So wherever you download something. So when you do download something, you should theoretically always know where it went because it went to the place you told it. So that was um, that was the download location. Um, tip number 14, oh, sorry, tip number whatever we're up to here is uh, customize a new page tab. When you open a new page, a new tab by clicking on the plus button up here, um, by default, it's this white background here with a few buttons and things on it. But if you look in the bottom corner, it says customize Chrome, and you can do things like change the background and change the shortcuts and the themes and stuff. So, for example, I might go in here and choose, uh, I kind of like that one. So, when you do that, it just changes that new tab page. So, now if I just close that, right? If I was to now open a new tab again, now it's going to open up with that sort of pretty background that I chose. So, not a not a real functional thing, but it makes it pretty to use, and you know, we all like things to look nice. So that's just a few settings you can do there. You can also control which of these buttons are here if you want. In fact, I just got that in there. Those shortcuts, there are those buttons there. You can have them, not have them at all if you don't want them. You can turn them off, or you can have them to be the shortcuts that you define, or they can just automatically go to the things you visit most often or appear there. So entirely up to you how you set that up. Um, the next tip is to uh, extend Chrome with extensions. So you can see I've got some little buttons up in the top corner here. These are called extensions. In fact, if I click on the jigsaw puzzle piece, you can see these are all the extensions that I've got installed. Um, I have another Google account with way more extensions installed, but each of these extensions does something extra. And the way you find extensions is you go to a place called the web store. Now, the easiest way to find the web store is just literally to go to Google and search for the word web store. And there it is there, Chrome Web Store. And when you go in there, like so, you, you, you can actually browse this extension list here. So as you go through here, all of these little buttons here, it's kind of like the App Store, okay? Except these are all extensions for Chrome. And each of them does different things. So for example, you know, here's one called Momentum. I don't know what this is. You hover over it, it'll tell you. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Um, you hover over it. Replace a new tab page with a personal dashboard to help you stay focused. What's this one do? This one does better than bookmarks, organize your browser tabs. Okay, go down here. This one does um, developer tools for debugging applicant. That sounds really nerdy. I'm not going to do that one. But they all do something different. And to install one, all you simply do is select it. It'll open in its own page and you say add to Chrome and it adds it. If you install an extension and then you decide later you don't want it, what you can do is you can right click on it and just say remove from Chrome. So it's really easy to try these things out. If you like them, keep them. If you don't like them, get rid of them. But extensions add extra abilities to the browser that it doesn't have by default. Um, some, some of those extensions are super useful. Um, easily create a QR code. If you've ever wanted to create a QR code, and you might have noticed in my slide deck here on the front page, I have a little QR code there. Um, so yeah, having a QR code for, um, uh, for for a page is really useful. And one of the ways you can do that, let's say let's say this Chrome Music Lab, I want a QR code for that so people can scan it and go straight there. If you just click in the address bar up the top here, there's a little button right there. And if you click it, there is the QR code for this page. Chrome just generates that for you automatically. If you want to keep it, you simply hit the download button and you get it as a graphic and you can just paste it wherever you want to put it. Uh, so nice and easy to do QR codes. 
Uh, the next one is to search using the everything key. Now, these next three tips that I've got for you are Chromebook tips. So the ones I've shown you so far, they will work on Chrome browser. Um, and Chrome browser works on Windows and Mac and Linux and uh, Chrome and all, Chromebooks, all sorts of things. But these next three tips are specifically for Chromebooks. Uh, I'm in a Chromebook right now, and there is a button on my keyboard where you would normally find a caps lock key. On a Chromebook, you don't have a caps lock key. Uh, you have instead what's called a search key or the everything key. And when you press it, it pops up this box on the side here and lets you do searches. So if I was to search for an app, so for example, I've got an app on here called Screencast, right? There's there's the app it finds, right? So I can I can launch the app that way. Or if I was to search for something like um, uh, I don't know, I've probably got a file in here called 15 Tips, right? And it actually finds the things inside my Google Drive. Or if I can come up here and I can just search for something like um, uh, weather, right? And it's going to bring up the Google weather search for today. So the everything key on a Chromebook built right into Chrome lets you search for anything anywhere in the drive, um, regardless of where it is. Sometimes it's a lot easier to do it that way. Uh, second last tip, uh, oh, sorry, third last tip, is take a screenshot or screen recording. Again, this is a Chromebook tip. So if I hit the Control, Shift, and Windows button, Control, Shift, Windows button, it pops up this screen and lets me take a screenshot or a screen recording. So if I want to take a screenshot of, um, I don't know, this panel down the side here, I can simply drag around like that, press the Enter key, and boom, it takes a screenshot for me. And it has just gone to... Uh, let me go to There you go. So there's there's the screenshot I just took. So really easy on a Chromebook. Um, if you're on Windows or Mac, there are probably other ways to take screenshots, but I just want to show you the Chromebook way because many of your students have Chromebooks. Uh, so it's Control, Shift, and the Windows key will let you take either a video or a snapshot. You can be a part of the screen, the whole screen. And if you're doing a video, you can also record your microphone and camera as well. And the last one is use your voice. So there is. you might notice my browser has a little button down the bottom here. Uh, that looks like a microphone, I've turned that on. There's a, there's a whole bunch of accessibility settings in Chromebook, um, and one of them is dictation. And the nice thing about it is you can dictate anywhere. So if I go to here and I want to search uh, search there, I can actually click this button here and say, um, you know, show me pictures of the statues on Easter Island. And there you go, so there, there it does it. So using your voice to search, and I know you can use your voice to do a, do a Google Doc. Some of you guys know that. Um, uh, but with the Chromebook, the search with voice is everywhere. So it doesn't matter where you are in the operating system, you can use your voice. And finally, the very last one is accessibility tools. I just showed you one of them, which is the microphone. But you've also got accessibility tools where it can read things to you. It can, uh, it can highlight things. Some of you may have noticed that on my screen here, uh, I've got like a little red circle around my mouse. Every time I move my mouse, it gets the red circle. That's an accessibility tool, and it's simply designed to make things easier to use. Um, if I don't lose my mouse as much. If I'm presenting to a group, uh, they can follow my mouse better. And you'll find all those accessibility tools in the settings here, and these are all the different accessibility tools. I can make my, my mouse larger. I can highlight the mouse cursor. I can have an on-screen keyboard or magnify what's on the screen. There's a whole bunch of things there. So um, I am going to leave it at that as my 15 tips. I, I, I don't know how long I used, but hopefully it'll be about 15 minutes. Um, if you want to revisit these tips, guys, I have put them in as a YouTube playlist as well. And of course, if you go to this address right here, bit.ly slash 15 Chrome tips, you'll find this slide deck. And on each one of these pages, there is a short video. Sorry, that's not that one's not a video. There is a short video that actually explains each of these tips. So hopefully uh, that will give you some ideas about some of the things you can do with Chrome. Hopefully there was one there you hadn't heard before. Um, but thanks for joining. Um, enjoy the rest of the day as you get started in this 2023 school year. I will stop the recording right now. Uh, and I will hang around for a couple of minutes if anyone has any